Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great day and a good start to the week, staying healthy and staying strong. I see on my feedback screen, I have a alfalfa hair. If anybody knows who alfalfa is, I'm trying to get that down. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Mahi. Hi, Ois. Good to see our members in the class. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Namra. Kajaldeep. Good to see many of our regular students as well. Excellent. As students in this class, we are looking at the IELTS speaking section. Specifically, we are focusing on part one, the first uh, few questions that kick off the speaking interview. And this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you prepare and practice and improve your band scores and your English communication. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. Our general IELTS website looks like this with the green background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package there. Uh, when you join, you get a My Student account that's right there. And then in that My Student account, you will find uh, some uh, computer-based practice exams, a fully interactive course, uh, printable PDF exams, over a hundred lesson videos in HD and lots of these recorded live classes as well. And then lots and lots of audio CDs and then even services for uh, writing and for speaking. Violet, I'm doing fantastic. Good to see you in the class. Um, and then students, the reason I'm showing you this too is because the most important way to improve your speaking is to practice. And you can do that on the websites for free, okay? So you see this uh, student partner speaking. And then of course you can book professional speaking interviews as well. So when you click on that student partner speaking, then you can go to another page where you will usually find at least a few students looking for speaking partners. Right now we have Masrur and Elena looking for speaking partners to video or audio chat. Um, so make sure to use that. Uh, keep the page open, uh, find some speaking partners and practice your speaking. Okay, practice does really make perfect. General IELTS has the same at gieltshelp.com, okay? And that's totally free on the website. Uh, we just want you to practice. Our success is your success. That means when you pass the IELTS and go to another country and start learning or living, that makes us all happy, okay? Um, it really does. So check that out. Okay, everyone, let's get into today's lesson a little bit more. Uh, again, if you want to contact me, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Nandan, you are super welcome. I know that you're using the website and the course, and you're very, very welcome. That's fantastic. Okay, everyone, so we have a full week of classes today, speaking. Tomorrow we have reading, more speaking, and then lots more classes. Let's get into today's questions. For the IELTS speaking, be yourself, be original, speak in full sentences, don't make mistakes. It's not a chit chat. You're having a professional conversation. We'll talk about what that means uh, as we go along. So you're having a professional conversation. You go into your exam room, okay? Take a deep breath. Be really relaxed, okay, because these days you have to do the speaking interview with a mask on. And if you have a mask on, make sure you have a good mask. Bring your own mask with you. Uh, make sure it's a mask that you can easily breathe in. Otherwise, if you're nervous and you can't breathe in your mask, it's going to make you even more nervous, okay? 
So that's super important that you can breathe as best as possible with the mask. So spend a couple dollars to get a good mask before you go to your speaking interview. One that has maybe those little breathing holes on the side. Okay. The, so you can do that. Okay. Um, yeah. Beck John says I had my speaking test in a mask. Uh, most people do. Okay. Yeah. And you want to practice that. We're going to have a really cool video about that coming out pretty quick here. Okay. So, um, stay calm, breathe. Okay. Stay calm and breathe. All right. Okay. So, uh, you go in and, uh, the first question the examiner will ask you is, may I see your identification? You have to show them your credit card or your national ID that you use to register, uh, for the exam. Okay. Makbuba says, yeah, absolutely. This is my ID that I use to register for this exam. Please take a look. Makbuba, that's perfect. Okay. Sammy says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport, which I use to register uh, for this exam. Please take a look. Mahi says, yes, sure. Here's my passport that I use to register for this exam. Okay. All of those are fantastic. So um, use a full sentence here. And... Um, this can be a restrictive or non-restrictive type clause. Okay, you can say, yes, here is my passport that I used to register for the exam. Please take a look. Okay, all right. Now, in speaking, um, whether you're using which or that is not overly important. In writing, it's more important to pay attention to that restrictive or non-restrictive clause as we discussed in our previous classes. But when you're speaking, if you say which, fine. If you say that, no worries. The examiner is not going to take marks for that. Uh, nobody really pays attention, including native speakers. So, um, all right. So again, this is speaking, everyone. So make sure to uh, speak and repeat. Begjan, did you get your score for the uh, speaking, by the way? I'm curious if you did, how did you do? Okay. So speak and repeat. All right. Please do share. If you don't want to share in the group, that's fine. Just send me an email because I'm really, really curious. Okay. Oh, you're still waiting. All right. Okay. Ooh, two days. Exciting. I'll be looking forward to that. All right, um, so the next question, and the examiner will have your passport here. They'll be holding on to it, uh, and then they'll, the examiner will ask you, uh, what is your full name? So here you want to give your full name in a nice, fluent manner, full sentence, okay? All right. Amanjot says... My first name is Aman Jot and my last name is Kaur. Please call me Aman for short. Yeah, that works. Aman Jot, good. Mohammed says my given name is Mohammed and my surname is Omran. Please call me Mohammed, uh, which is my first name. Okay, good, Mohammed. That works. An says my given name is An and my last name is Nagaim. Uh, but please just call me An. That works too. Okay, that's a nice natural way to respond to that. Sammy says, my name is Siva Sankar and my surname is Pulitvarti. Please call me by my nickname, Sammy. Yeah, works really well, Sammy. Okay, you have a nice, complex, beautiful name and it's good that you uh, give a nickname which is a little bit simpler for the examiner. It's a smart idea in this case. Uh, Victor says, my name is Victor. My surname is Korolenko. Please just call me by my given name, Victor. That works really well. Fantastic. So my full name is Jeffrey Andrew Smithson. Please just call me Jeff for short. Okay. And you might say something like, as you will also see in my passport, or as you can also see in my passport, uh, 
please uh, just call me because they're holding your passport at this time. So you might as well reference it, right? Um, so here we go again, speak and repeat. So what is your full name? My full name is Jeffrey Andrew Smithson, as you can also see in my passport. Please just call me Jeff for short. Look, 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 look. Okay, Jeff, here's your passport back. Thank you. Uh, the speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. And I'm going to record this for marking purposes. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. And then you start, okay? It's quite standard. The examiners are uh, trained. It's quite a typical type of dialogue that they start with. And then they may ask you a question like, uh, what do you like to do in your leisure time? They might go with a simpler word depending on your introduction and say, what do you like to do in your free time? Okay, and then give a nice a full sentence answer for that question. Roshni says, in my free time, I adore sitting uh, on the front porch and being in the moment, observing what is happening in my surroundings. This helps me decompress. La yet just the other day, I sat there for half an hour and watched birds. Yeah, Roshni, it's also called people watching. I'll explain that in a second, okay? Um, it's a good answer, Roshni. Just make sure that you've got good grammar and natural language, okay? Uh, don't get clever in the beginning, students. Just keep it simple, keep it clear. You want to start clean and strong, okay? So this is kind of my first tip for speaking part one to get those higher band scores, those band nines, okay? Uh, do not answer with fancy sentences and words uh, for the icebreaker questions because if you make mistakes right at the beginning it looks really bad okay so keep it simple clear and accurate okay super important okay so uh, in your practice like roshni just did sure get fancy learn new words learn new expressions learn to be yourself but during the exam don't try any new strategies or ideas uh, that you haven't perfected before the exam just be super careful about that okay all right niha says well i do a tremendous number of activities in my spare time such as reading books hanging out with friends watching movies mind you i am really into reading especially science fiction books which boost my confidence um, i love the heroic tales that most of them contain okay uh, niha again good you're practicing being original but in the real exam make sure that you are 100% accurate, okay? All right. Abhay says, well, there are several activities I love to do in my free time, uh, like playing sports with friends or some more relaxing ones like writing a book or watching a movie. Currently, I'm writing um, a novel about a man who explores a... Uh, Forest never before touched by human feet. Okay, Abhay, that's good. Maybe give an example of the book that you're writing. Okay, so um, during my spare time, I like to meet up with my best friend, Corey, sit at a cafe and have a good chit chat um, while we people watch. This means we usually sit on the patio and look at the different um, types of people passing by. Both of us have degrees in social sciences, and so this makes for interesting conversation. 
I'm not sure if any of you have heard about this, but uh, people watching is a pastime activity for many uh, in North America. Uh, that means kind of just sitting there and looking at the people who are walking by and thinking about what kind of lives they have, what they might be thinking, how their day is going, and then discussing that. Um, it sounds like people have nothing better to do, but it is actually kind of fun and interesting every now and then. Um, so just something new for you this time to answer this question. Uh, again, students, practice your questions and your answers, okay? Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What do you like to do in your leisure time? During my spare time, I like to meet up with my best friend, Corey, sit at a cafe, and have a good chit-chat while people watching. This means we usually sit on the patio and look at the different types of people passing by. Both of us have degrees in social sciences, so this makes for interesting conversation. And it is truly a pastime activity, people watching. Okay, all right. Uh, that kind of came from Roshni's idea of sitting on the patio. It's often where people do their people watching. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's get into some more uh, specific um, points here. Yeah, Beck John, people watching is uh, a verb collocation as well. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. So, uh, part one, let's talk about nature. Okay, good. Now, as soon as you hear the topic of part one, you should have many different ideas bouncing around in your head, okay? Because they will be useful as the examiner asks you some questions. So uh, when you hear this kind of catch word, nature, uh, what kind of words come into mind? So what kind of images, what kind of pictures, what are some words? Let's have some ideas before we get into the questions, okay? This is called word association. You're connecting the word with ideas, okay? So Amanjat says plants, animals. Okay, very good. So plants, animals, those should be uh, some of the first ideas. Uh, Romaine says global warming. I see forest. Yeah, forest, global warming. So uh, dangers of with nature. Axe says flowers. Darshak says sightseeing. Flowers, yeah. Uh, greenery, uh, our color says flora, fauna, Pandey says mountains, yeah. Yeah, anybody have fresh air? I don't know if anybody had fresh air. Sea, fish, fresh air really comes to mind for me. Maybe that's just because I'm in the middle of Budapest right now and I'm used to much fresher air usually um prince to shark says trekking yeah hiking trekking parks okay good so that's what should be coming to mind as soon as you hear that word and uh, that's happening very quickly okay flash of a second all right a camera i think it was hassan remember that said the average human can think of 2,500 ideas every second, something like that. Yeah. Um, okay, birds chirping. So here's the question. Uh, what is your favorite part of nature? Okay, so the examiner will usually start with something fairly simple. Okay, uh, what is your favorite part of nature? All right, David says, the aspect of nature I like most is the forests since there are lots of different flowers, wildlife there, also because these places are isolated and I can breathe fresh air. Uh, David, zone is awkward, it's not natural, okay? So you want to pick a more natural word than zone uh, for part, aspect, okay? Or just use part, if you're not sure, use part, all right? Um, and um, keep in mind, students, that in part one, you're really focusing on your, so your answers should be the first person voice, okay? Me, my, I, me, my, I. Keep thinking, me, my, I, okay? Me, my, I, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna write down these two tips real quick before we go on. 
Um, all right, so uh, only, so this is a tip, okay, to get those higher band scores. Only paraphrase the question with words that you are certain uh, can correctly replace the originals or the original words, okay? If not, uh, use the words of the question directly, okay? That's tip number one. Uh, tip two, okay, uh, in part one, uh, use the first uh, person voice, okay? Uh, it means speak directly from your own subjective view, okay? This means you're using I, me, my, myself, all right? That's what you got to do, okay? So my favorite part of nature, okay? Um, my favorite part of nature, if I had to say, uh, would be, okay? Um, so again, look at that first person, okay? My, I, favorite part. I'm not paraphrasing, but I'm making sure that I'm correct, okay? All right, that's what you want to do. All right, Panday says, I really like the forest because it's exciting to watch animals and birds uh, being active and learn lots of interesting facts from them. Also, I like um, water places because they're relaxing and enjoyable, like the lake uh, near my house. Okay, so Pande, give an example. And Pande, don't use the word things. Always avoid the word things. Abhay says, I love nature, um, but here I would like to talk about the mountains. Uh, don't say that, Abhay. Don't say what you would like to talk about. Just talk about it, okay? Um, if you learn uh, public speaking classes, you will very quickly in public speaking uh, learn not to ever state what you're going to state, just state it, okay? So in public speaking, kind of like this class, in public speaking classes, uh, you will quickly learn uh, never to state what you will talk about as this is useless and boring for your audience. Uh, instead, just directly state what you want to talk about, okay? It's uh, public speaking 101, okay? So my favorite uh, part of nature, if I would have, if I had to say, uh, would be the mountains. I just love their massive size and the uh, challenges they present when I go on hikes. The mountains have a special kind of peace and quiet where I feel that I can escape all of the stresses of the busy city life. I go hiking on Mount uh, Douglas near my home at least once a week for this very reason. Okay, so uh, here's my answer. Okay, and I'll read a couple more. Um, repeat after me. What is your favorite part of nature? My favorite part of nature, if I had to say, would be the mountains. I just love their massive size and the challenges they present when I go on hikes. The mountains have a special kind of peace and quiet where I feel that I can escape all of the stresses of the busy city life. I go hiking on Mount Douglas near my home at least once a week for this very reason. All right, so here I have that first person voice, okay? I'm very clearly telling the examiner what my favorite part of nature is. Look at all the I, 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 my, I, okay? Lots of first person voice. 
I explain clearly that it's the mountains right away. I don't beat around the bush. So I don't talk about what I want to talk about today and how I have many different favorite parts of nature, but the one I love the most. So no, I go directly to it. It's the mountains. It's the forest. It's the lakes. It's the trees. It's the birds. Okay. So um, go right to it and then explain why. So here I explain that I like mountains because they're challenging, they're peaceful, they're quiet, and uh, it helps me get away from stress. And then I go right into an example. Notice how I don't say, for example, I go hiking. I just say it. I go hiking on Mount Douglas. It's clear that it's an example because it's very direct. It's linking. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so let me take a look at a couple of more answers before I go on, okay? Uh, Sajita says, well, Nepal is bellished with a lot of natural places. I love to watch greenery around my hometown because this enhances the sight of my eyes as well as fresh air for respiration. Uh, Sajita, it's unclear that answer. I'll be honest with you. I have an idea of what you're saying, but I still don't really know what your favorite part of nature is, okay? Um, whenever you're thinking, how well did I answer this question? Okay. So if you have this question in your mind, like how well did I answer the question? Okay. A good way to test this is ask the question again after you answered it and check if the answer is there. Okay, so the example would be the answer and then the question. So what is your favorite part of nature? Okay, and then the answer, the mountains. Okay, so in this case, Sajita, if I'm looking at yours, uh, Nepal is bellished with a lot of natural places. I love to watch greenery around my hometown. What is your favorite part of nature? Maybe the greenery around your hometown, but I don't really get what that is yet, right? It's not very specific and I'm kind of guessing. Is it a forest that's near your hometown? Is there a meadow, a field, a mountain, a valley? So what is that greenery around your hometown? You want to be specific. Okay, here it's very specific, the mountains, all right? Um, so be specific, have a clear answer, okay? Zohaib says, I love nature overall, but my favorite part, if I had to say, are animals, um, because I think that these creatures originated from a single organization. We all have similarities somehow. Okay, Zohaib, it's not bad. It's a little bit philosophical. Careful with that. Okay. All right. Uh, Prince Tushkar says, during weekends, I like to go for long rides in the mountains. I like feeling the breeze on the hilltop. I have completed some of the most dangerous treks in Maharashtra. So what is your favorite part of nature, Prince Tushar? Long rides in the mountains, maybe. It's unclear. Okay, you need to be clear on that. Okay, all right, so clear answers, students. Clear answers get the high, high bands. All right, remember, two ways to improve your speaking score, communication and English, and often communication is the fastest way to improve. Okay, uh, here we go, next question. Where do you go to enjoy fresh air? Where do you go uh, to enjoy fresh air? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Where do you go to enjoy fresh air? Violet says, I think sitting on the roof is the best because it's very cool and I can see my neighborhood while enjoying the fresh air on the roof. Okay, Violet, um, a little bit higher altitude on the roof. How high is your roof? Is it like the 10th floor? or the fifth floor, so where is it? Um, be a little bit quantitative. I, I'd like to imagine how high up you are <laughs> to get a feeling for that fresh air. Mohammed Azat says, 
I prefer the sea um, that I enjoy with waves. I consider it to give me a source of strength and I get pure fresh air. Sometimes I go with my friends fishing and the salty sea air fills my lungs and it's fantastic to breathe. Okay, a little bit more Mohammed, but I think you have a really uh, good idea. And again, students, just once in the chat, okay? Mohammed, I see you've put your answer in like five times, so only once, okay? Otherwise, I won't read it the next time. Um, Beck John says, whenever I want to uh, take in fresh air, I often take a stroll uh, in the nearby park called Tiberdiarov, which is situated uh, outside of my hometown, and there aren't any cars or types of transportation which pollute the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you want to get out of the smog line of the city. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sagar says, well, to be honest, I'm a passionate trekker, so once a week I prefer to stroll in the woods, uh, exploring um, the chirping sounds of birds, and to puff fresh oxygen and to stay calm and energetic. Okay, Sagar, good. Uh, don't use the phrase, well, to be honest there, okay? Um, here's another quick tip. Okay, uh, the phrase to be honest, is often overused and used incorrectly, okay? Uh, I just recommend not using, to be honest, um, because it sounds kind of funny if you're the audience. Uh, so if you do not say, well, uh, to be honest, um, does that mean you are uh, lying to me sometimes? Okay, so th does it mean that you're not always telling me uh, the truth if you're, um, if you're saying uh, to be honest, right? And it's kind of awkward. So you want to position that phrase uh, very, very carefully, all right? I know it sounds like I'm picking on these kinds of phrases, and in some sense I am, okay? I just want your communication to be that much better. I want it to be professional. Remember what I said at the beginning is that you need to sound professional in the speaking interview to get those high, high band scores, okay? So you want to avoid awkward expressions, especially for questions where it doesn't really make sense. Why would you not be honest about where you go to get fresh air, right? It's kind of weird. Okay. All right. Onur Akol says, I usually go to small villages on my vacations every year. They're surrounded by forests and give me a feeling of freedom. It helps me to motivate and reset myself with lots of uh, clean air. Yeah. Air is not just oxygen. It's, we can say, oxygen-rich air. So I can say, well, as I had mentioned, um, I love hiking up mountains, and that is <clears throat> where I breathe the uh, freshest air in my city, uh, not only because uh, the uh, top of the mountain, mountains, or top of the, not only because to the top of the mountains are well above uh, the smog line, but also because the air is rich with oxygen. Okay, which is not necessarily true. The higher we go, the less the oxygen is. But if there's smog in your city, then it is, okay? All right, here I'm just teaching you some words as well. So uh, here we go. I'm making a connection between the ideas. So here I said that my favorite place in nature is the mountain. I like to go hiking on mountains. And then where do you uh, go to enjoy fresh air? Well, as I had mentioned, I love hiking up mountains, and that is where 
I breathe the freshest air in my city, not only because the top of the mountains are well above the smog line, but also because the air is rich with oxygen. Okay, so there's a bit of vocabulary for you as well. Okay, uh, next question. Here we go, everyone. Have you done any nature activities recently? Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Have you done any nature activities recently? Okay. Oh, it says, sure, I like um, green surroundings. So I've suggested to plant some trees in a small zone in our neighborhood where my friends and I put in about 15 different types of trees in one place. That was two years ago. Okay, always, oh, uh, recently, two years ago would not be considered recently. Two years ago is, yeah, I would say it's in the past, okay? So pay attention to the details of the question, all right? Here we go. Ferdov says, yes, I've picked up waste from the nearest mountain, which is a wonderful place to visit. I organized a campaign in order to clean that tourist destination through Facebook, and we gathered over 10 tons of rubbish. Very nice for Dobbs. Okay, so not only doing some kind of nature activity, but uh, doing nature conservation. Okay, it's nature conservation, so you're conserving uh, nature. It's very good. All right. Sammy says, I recently cleaned my apartment park and had fun along with my neighbors. Also, I went on a long drive uh, ride by bike with my wife along the seaside. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to be in a forest. So biking along um, the seaside or along the shore uh, is absolutely uh, good. Now, Sammy, be careful. Remember, you don't drive a bike. You ride a bike, whether it's a motorbike or a uh, pedal bicycle, you ride it. You don't drive it. You drive a car. Uh, don't make verb mistakes, students. They're costly. Verb mistakes drop your score. Okay. All right. Catherine says, last year I did join a group to clean the beach near my home. Um, students, it sounds like many of you are thinking that a nature activity means cleaning up nature. But if you went surfing hiking, rock climbing, um, those are all nature activities, okay? Hunting is a nature activity. So any activity that you do in nature, it's not necessarily um, going to pick up garbage in nature, although that's fantastic, and I love how many of you are saying that. Uh, do remember that it's not restricted to that, okay? Being a woman says, well, to be honest, I always indulged in the paddy fields near my home. More often than not, I go with my, um, with my daughter for an evening walk there. This is where I can get the freshest air in uh, the town. Paddy fields, you mean like cow fields? It's kind of interesting. All right. Um, let's see, Sehun says, actually last week my friends and I went to the forest near my hometown. We planted a lot of trees, which was beneficial for our future. Uh, Sehun, watch your verb form. My friends and I go to the forest. My friends and I went to the forest, past tense. Okay, uh, tense mistakes are bad also. All right, careful with that. Rajveer says, I visited a national park in Delhi and did cleanup activities and planted over 300 uh, trees. Rajveer, vary your words. So planted over 300 trees, okay? Amrita says, last week uh, there was rain in my hometown and I enjoyed a lot along with my family uh, making paper boats and memories the activities of my childhood. Okay, Amrita, not bad, a little bit confusing. Careful with your grammar. All right. Yarabisha Yanuar says, uh, last week I took a walk around the Merapi looking for uh, fresh air in the town, doing some deep meditation in order to uh, release stress from my job. The calmness and tremendous 
um, decline in pressure at the time was extremely refreshing. Yet, Abisha, careful with your grammar. Okay. I had to do a lot of corrections there. Bekjan says, yes, I have uh, done some activities, but recently I think it was hiking with my little brother around a couple of weeks ago. We went to uh, Mount uh, Shiganak. Uh, where we enjoyed the natural beauty and a picnic with our neighbors. Okay, very good. Yeah, so nature activities, yeah, um, certainly. Referring back to my previous points, I went on a two-hour hike up Mount Doug with a couple of my friends. We took some snacks and refreshments with us and had a really good time. We saw a few deer along the way and took incredible pictures of the surrounding vistas. All right. Um, so here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, have you done any nature activities recently? Certainly. Referring back to my previous points, I went on a two-hour hike up Mount Doug with a couple of my friends. We took some snacks and refreshments with us and had a really good time. We saw a few deer along the way and took incredible pictures of the surrounding vistas. Okay, and then here is the next question. What do you do to protect the environment? I think many of you were answering uh, this question a little bit early. Now you can talk about planting trees and picking up garbage and recycling. So what do you do to protect the environment? Okay. All right. So for Dob says, as I have just mentioned, I usually organize uh, clean our forest activities twice a month. Aside from that, I teach the young generation at school on how to protect our environment. Uh, Roshni says, I usually pay attention to recycling wet and dry garbage in different containers every week because it's easy to recycle and saves time. So I play my role to protect nature. Nice use of uh, idiomatic language. Roshni, I play my role to protect nature. That's very good. Okay. All right. Beck John says, in order to take care of nature, I try to recycle the trash by separating uh, it into different containers like metal, glass, and paper. Not only that, but I always use my bike instead of my car so that the environment does not get polluted unnecessarily. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, in order to reduce my carbon footprint on the planet, I choose to ride my bike to work instead of drive my car. Also, I pay careful attention to recycling and I plant at least a hundred uh, trees each year in order to conserve my surrounding uh, forests. All right, um, just last month, I planted a couple hundred pine trees with a group of environmentalists. All right, uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What do you do to protect the environment? In order to reduce my carbon footprint on the planet, I choose to ride my bike to work instead of drive my car. Also, I pay careful attention to recycling and I plant at least 100 trees each year in order to conserve my surrounding forests. Just last month, I planted a couple hundred pine trees with a group of environmentalists. Okay, there is some vocabulary in there for you as well, so make sure to catch that 
and write it down. Okay. Um, here we go, students. One more question, one last question. I'll take a few more responses to this. Okay, if you visit any natural place, where would you go? So if you could uh, visit, or if you could go and visit any natural place, where would you go? And it has to be a natural place, obviously. Uh, that's the topic, okay? All right. Oh, it says, if I could do this, I would go on an ocean tour in a boat and do some fishing at the same time. Okay, so where though, Ois? Be specific. So uh, would you go in the North Pacific Ocean? Uh, would you uh, fish one of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie? Uh, where would you go for your fishing adventure? So be specific. Uh, Mahi says, uh, tip, friends, if you want to achieve seven plus bands, um, get the contact details of Beck, John, Rajvir for practice and uh, focus on Adrian's classes. Okay, Mahi, thank you for sharing. Um, Juan Pablo says, I would definitely go uh, south to Puerto Madryn here in Argentina. Um, the seasons there are a lot of whales close to the shore. I'm planning to share all of this on social media to brighten awareness about the natural beauty and importance of this place. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know the... West Coast, we've got whales up on around Vancouver Island as well. So beautiful animals. Uh, Roman says, to mention a few, I would never get tired of taking a hike to Mount Champa with a bunch of fellas, taking incredible photos, refreshing myself uh, with the fresh air above the smog line. Not the fog line, Roman, but the smog line. Smog is like smoke and fog put together. Smog. Fog, smoke, smog. Okay. Aman Jot says, well, Dame Zoo is the only place I would love to visit in the future. A zoo is not really a place in nature, Aman Jot. A zoo would not be considered a place in nature unless it's a nat nature um, preserve. Okay. But a city zoo, for example, would not be considered a part of nature. So that would be an awkward answer. All right. Careful with information mistakes. Rajveer says, given a chance to visit a natural place, I would like to visit Ladakh. I've heard a lot about it in this place from my friends about the breathtaking views of the mountains covered with snow. Yeah, Ladakh in the uh, Himalayas, right, Rajveer? I would love to visit there as well. So um, given the chance to explore a beautiful part of nature. I would love to visit the Ladakh uh, region of the Himalayas. As I had said, uh, I love mountains and I'm sure that seeing the highest mountain range in the world uh, would be simply uh, breathtaking. All right. Um, so repeat after me. If you could visit any natural place, where would you go? Given the chance to explore a beautiful part of nature, I would love to visit the Ladakh region of the Himalayas. As I had said, I love mountains, and I'm sure that seeing the highest mountain range in the world would be simply breathtaking. That's it for today's class students. Lots of tips today. Uh, make sure to review those, okay? Make sure to practice. I showed you that on both aehelp.com and gltshelp.com. You can do face-to-face -face speaking practice uh, through um, video or audio chat uh, for free. So make sure to use that. There's lots of questions there for you as well. And of course, I highly, highly recommend joining our premium package, getting our apps, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help, link the app to the website, maximize your learning and improve your band scores. All of the students who use 
our learning materials regularly do improve their band scores. It's not a question of uh, maybe, it's a question of for sure. It's just making sure to use them, okay? Uh, that's it for today. Tomorrow, I will be back uh, with some uh, more uh, reading. Uh, Jehun, I see that, okay? So not Sehun, but it's Jehun. I'll take a note of that Jehun for next time. Um, you don't need to put it in there anymore. And uh, again, have a wonderful rest of your day. Students, come back tomorrow uh, for some more practice. Much love to all of you out there. You're all beautiful people. Keep up the great effort, and the sweet fruits of your hard work will be yours. I'm Adrian, and I'm signing out from Budapest for now. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>